The 2023 NBA playoffs have been the weirdest, irregular, most random, and most unpredictable playoffs we've seen in a while. We've seen championship contenders get knocked out in the first round, old superstars showing they still have some gas left in the tank, disrespected superstars trying to make a name for themselves. We've seen stars rise to the occasion and others fall. But what really separates these playoffs from previous years is what this fringe play-in team has done. The Miami Heat are not supposed to be here. What the 8 seeded Miami Heat are doing is incredible. It's unheard of. Who would have thought a team that was about one shot away from going home in the play-in tournament would have any business being in the NBA Finals? It's the classic underdog story, but this isn't the only time we've seen this story play out. Throughout the history of the modern NBA, we've seen several underdogs shock the whole world. The first great example is in 1995 when the Houston Rockets, that were the 6th seed, won the NBA Finals. During the trade deadline, the Rockets traded Otis Thorpe away for Clyde Drexler. They got got rid of their second big man in exchange for a complimentary guard around Hakeem, and this move paid dividends come postseason time. The Rockets, as the sixth seed, first beat the three-seeded John Stockton and Carl Malone Utah Jazz 3-2. Then they beat the two-seeded Phoenix Suns with Charles Barkley and Kevin Johnson, despite Kevin Johnson playing out of his mind this series, averaging 28 points a game on great efficiency, compared to his measly 15 points a game in the regular season. The Rockets then beat the number one seeded San Antonio Spurs with David Robinson. 4-2. Finally, they beat the Orlando Magic in the NBA Finals 4-0. A Penny Hardaway and Shaq duo was nothing compared to Hakeem and Clyde. Okay, sure, the Rockets with Hakeem may have been able to pull this off, but who else? The New York Knicks in 1999 is your answer. The 1998 and 99 season was a lockout season, so there was only 50 games played, but this didn't phase the Knicks. In the first round, the Knicks being the 8th seed, beat the one-seeded Miami Heat 3-2, who played terrible in this series. From there, they swept the four-seeded Atlanta Hawks in the second round 4-0. Next, they beat the two-seeded Pacers 4-2. Reggie Miller didn't perform well in this series. Finally, in the NBA Finals, unfortunately this underdog story came to an end because they got blasted by the San Antonio Spurs in the Finals losing 4-1. As you remember a couple years ago, the Miami Heat, led by Jimmy Butler in the bubble, did almost the exact same thing. They swept the four-seeded Pacers, beat the one-seeded Milwaukee Bucks in five games, and beat the three-seeded Celtics in six games. The same man accomplished this feat of bringing a lower-seeded team to the finals not once, but twice. The bubble wasn't rigged. The bubble showed which team could adjust to the unique circumstance the best. No hot or cold streaks coming into the bubble, everyone was virtually equal. It's no surprise the Heat did so well in the bubble. The Heat don't care what seed they are, they're still going to come for your neck no matter what. And I think the first man that deserves his flowers is the man, the myth, the legend, Playoff Jimmy. Jimmy during this amazing playoff run has averaged 28.5 points, 7 rebounds, and 5.7 assists per game and has led his team to the NBA Finals. This is a very difficult stat line to put up. So difficult that only a few players in NBA history have achieved it, like Kobe Bryant in 2001, LeBron James in 2012, 15, 17, and 18, and Giannis in 2021. The well-roundedness of Jimmy Butler is what makes him so great. Not only his ability to get a bucket whenever he pleases, but to do other things so well, like playmaking and getting boards. But we're forgetting one thing Jimmy Butler does exceptionally, his lockdown defense. Jimmy Butler is one of the greatest two-way playoff performers we've ever seen. Jimmy Butler in this postseason run is averaging 28 points and 2 steals. There's only ever been one other player in modern NBA history to achieve this. This player has not accomplished this feat once, but six times. A player that's getting called Jimmy Butler's dad. It's none other than Michael Jordan. We've seen players get it done on the offensive side. We've seen players get it done on the defensive side. But to see a player that's truly elite on both ends of the court is truly special. It's a once in a generation thing to see. It's so incredibly rare to see a superstar holding up the load on offense and also giving it their all on defense. It's something you only see twice every 40 years apparently. 
I don't know, I think these father-son allegations might be onto something. But of course, basketball is a team game. Jimmy Butler wouldn't have done this by himself. The role players from Miami have stepped up in a big way this season. Despite the Heat dealing with injuries to arguably their two best players besides Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo with Tyler Hero and Victor Oladipo, the Heat's supporting cast has still came through. The six players that I believe stepped up for Miami around Jimmy and Bam are Gabe Vincent, Caleb Martin, Max Struss, Kyle Lowry, Kevin Love, and Duncan Robinson. During the regular season, these six players averaged a combined 46.9 shot attempts in the regular season. In the postseason, they've taken slightly more shot attempts at 48.8. Although this may not seem like much, you have to remember that the shot attempts for the average supporting cast in the NBA Finals decreases significantly as the stars in the team can continue to take more and more shots. But all this proves is that the Heat's role players are taking more shots, not actually playing better. In the 2023 regular season, these six players averaged a combined 55 points a game. In the postseason, they're averaging 62.3 points a game. Again, it might not seem like anything groundbreaking, but you have to remember that the scoring output for the average supporting cast for an NBA Finals team decreases significantly as the stars in the team continue to increase their scoring output. The role players in this team are a key reason that this team is where they are. I mean, Jimmy Butler playing like the rebirth of Michael Jordan is great and all, but these six guys' contributions are crucial to this team's success. Abe Vincent, who went from a small guard coming off the bench, giving you whatever he could, to being the Heat's legit third option during the conference finals and excelling at it. Caleb Martin, who's became the sixth man of the year in the postseason, hitting even more threes than in the regular season. Max Struss, a confident sharpshooter that's came up with many big shots for the Heat in these playoffs. Kyle Lowry and Kevin Love, despite aging, are still giving the Heat much needed contributions and have given great veteran leadership. And Duncan Robinson, who went from almost unplayable to Klay Thompson in the matter of one postseason. Now to really give credit where credit's due, I think it's about time we give coach Eric Spolstra his flowers. Spolstra, throughout his 15 years of head coaching for the Miami Heat, has achieved six Eastern Conference championships and two NBA championships. For only coaching for 15 years, these accomplishments put him by some of the greatest coaches the league has ever seen. When looking at some of the greatest coaches in modern NBA, you can say that Eric Spolstra is in the same echelon as a lot of the greatest coaches of all time. Here is Spolstra's coaching trajectory. For reference, zero means you didn't make the playoffs, one means you made it to the first round, two means you made it to the conference semifinals, three means you made it to the conference finals, four means you made it to the NBA finals, and five means you won the NBA finals. Here's Spolstra's coaching trajectory. He started off strong with with the LeBron, D. Wade, and Bosch trio, giving him four conference championships and two finals. After that, it took a little dip for Spolstra, but in 2020, we saw him make it to the NBA Finals. In 2023, the same, but that could change to a championship. Another young and super accomplished coach is Steve Kerr. With only nine years of experience, but already six finals appearances and four rings to show for it. It's so rare to see this type of success so young in a coach's career. Pat Riley also has a very similar start as Spolstra, where he was brought into a thriving franchise and as a result has multiple championships in his first few years. And then like Spolstra, he took a dip down from the championships. Greg Popovich has had more of a consistent presence in the NBA Finals compared to these other coaches. Popovich, until recently, was consistently winning championships while coaching the Spurs. He never really had a playoff drought until recent, but that could very well change with someone. Before we look at our last coach, I wanted to give an honorable mention to Red Arback, who coached the Bill Russell Celtics to nine championships in the 60s, but he really doesn't fit the modern era definition. And the greatest coach of all time, Bill Jackson. This man has always been in the NBA Finals from day one to his final days. He's virtually had no playoff droughts in his career like all these other coaches have had. 11 championships in 20 years is no joke. This shows the elite company that Eric Spolstra of the Heat is starting to join. The 2023 NBA Playoffs have been one of the weirdest postseasons ever. So much stuff that's happened that no one, not even the best analysts or reporters, could have seen coming. You can't tell me you honestly thought the 8 seeded Miami Heat would make the NBA Finals. The Heat are reminding everyone that they're still a top team in the East, even if the regular season record doesn't quite say that. The Heat are on a mission, 
led by the second coming of Michael Jordan, I meant Jimmy Butler, a supporting cast that's stepping up at the right time and buying into the system, and one of the greatest coaches of all time in charge of this barrage. The Miami Heat are reminding us that the postseason doesn't care about seeds.